of human life is to serve, to show compassion and the will of helping others. A very warm good morning to you all. Today, we the Badanians are here remembering a great personality, the servant of God, who dedicated his entire life helping others with compassion. He embedded effort in making the life of unspecified people worthful surviving in this world. He is none other than Reverend Metropolitan Archbishop Ewar East Man Emanuel Spanker Vidal, the father of Malankara Reunion Movement. Greetings to all. We celebrate Mariano's Day in the memory of Archbishop Ewar Manuels, who taught us earning God is more important than saving God. God speaks in the silence of heart. Listening is the beginning of prayer. Let us all join our hands in prayer, led by our school choir. Now, Jeevan Bethany seeking you, Lord. Make us an instrument of thy peace. Shine your light upon us. Set us free by the truth. We, Bethany, and seek thee. Let the love be on our lives. Search us, glance us, and me. Your glory shine on us. Your glory shine on us. Thanking God Almighty and invoking His blessings is truly a great way to start our program today. Now I would like to invite Maria Jacob to give the welcome speech. I would like to begin with a quote by Henry Ford. Coming together is a beginning, staying together is progress, and working together is success. Good morning everybody. I am Maria Jacob from 9B. I am here to welcome each one of you to this auspicious occasion as we celebrate Maravanya's Day. It's a privilege to welcome our chief guest of the day, Reverend Father Prafal Oifi, who is the principal of Gyanwadiya Bethany English View College, the Lady. I also welcome our respected administrator, Reverend Father Thomas George Oifi, Principal Shana Ranjit Ma'am, Vice Principal Shiny Kevin Ma'am, all our teachers, non-teaching staff, and each one of you to this very special day. Father Prafulo IC, the principal of Nyano Devati English PU College Kalyari, to give a message and grace the occasion. Hi and good morning, dear Bethanians. Wishes and greetings of the day. As we all know, today the entire world is clouded by a darkness of fear because of the pandemic. And there is all possibility that this darkness of fear will push us into frustration, loneliness, anger, anxiety, depression, etc. And so it becomes inevitable that we keep on reflecting on the lives of motivating characters who are capable of inspiring our life and instilling hope into us. All these motivating characters have passed through this stage of darkness and they were capable of shedding light into the life of thousands of people around them. Remember, stars shine only in darkness and only darkness can bring out the star in you. And today in a special manner, we are commemorating such a star who lived amongst us and who shed light into the life of thousands of people who are grazing through the shadow, through the valleys of uh, darkness and in the person of His Grace, Servant of God, Archbishop Gevar Gismar Ivanios. A couple of historical part might be uh, well known to you, so I am not getting into the history part. A couple of points which have actually inspired me and I do believe that will be inspiring you as youngsters to improve your quality of life. First of all, a thing that inspired me about Marivanios is he was profoundly known as a person with a golden tongue. He was known as a person with a golden tongue. On one part, it might be because of his oratorial skills. He was capable of speaking at length for hours and hours together on theological topics. But on the other hand, it's because of his capacity to mesmerize people by his words. 
anyone who spoke to him once would always come back and speak to him he was capable of creating an aura of positivity around the people uh, to whom all he spoke he was capable of instilling hope into the life of people his words were as sweet as honey and as pure as the pearl this is a point of reflection for us how many of our words are golden how many of us are capable of instilling hope into the life of a person who speaks to us how many of our friends wants to come back and keep speaking to us how many of us create an aura of positivity around the people whom we speak with children always remember everything that comes out of our body stings has a foul smell or is poisonous like a sweat urine our blood uh, our, our saliva our feces even carbon dioxide that comes out of our body is poisonous and there is possibility of only one thing that can be sweet that comes out of our body and that is our words especially in this hour of uh, darkness during this pandemic period we should speak positively we are judged our personality is judged by the way we speak by the vocabularies we use as bethanians you children should be people with a golden tongue secondly something that inspired me is a small story that he uses to explain this one of his famous quotation or say and so it was like this a traveler traveling through a desert land a wayfarer travels to a desert land and at distant he sees a tree which is full of fruits and is having beautiful shade the tree may not call the traveler to come and take rest in its shade nor eat from its fruits the traveler will himself go to the tree pluck the fruits and eat and take rest in its shade and by this he comes to a very classical saying virtue flows from the virtuous only virtuous people can give virtues into the life of others this becomes a very important thing he focus more on being virtuous than doing virtuous deeds you have to become virtuous and if you become virtuous automatically virtues will flow from you especially in today's world we see that virtue has become a thing of publicity for publicity it stands we do virtuous deeds it's not because we are virtuous but because we want to show others that we are virtuous we do virtuous deeds no as bethanians he would tell including you and me as part of bethany maribanio stands as an icon of being virtuous you have to become a person of virtues a person who is virtuous from whom good things will flow into this world so that the entire world can be translated into a virtuous one and the third thing that has inspired me about maribanios is his strong faith as i said to you before his entire life was full of darkness there had been couple of hundreds of moments where he could have committed suicide so he could have fallen if he could have fallen down but he remained strong in his faith his faith in his god my god who holds my hand and will carry me through this darkness my god has given this darkness into my life so that i can start shine as a star that was his faith and this faith should be there within you uh, i'm remembered of a small story of saint augustine who tells that once he was walking he was a saint of the catholic church so he was walking once through uh, the sea shore and after walking for a couple of hours he felt uh, tired and he sat down and he looked back he looked back and he was a surprise to see that along with his two footsteps you know when you walk through the sand footsteps are created and along with his two footsteps he saw two more footsteps accompanying him he was surprised but like, whose footsteps are these and then an invisible voice said to him my dear child these are my footsteps i am your creator i am your lord what is most happy a person who is walking alone is always happy when someone is there to accompany him he got up refreshed started walking having the belief that god is there walking with me after walking for some time pain started coming into his life thorns started coming in his path after walking a 
Lord, uh, after walking a bit forward, he sat down, tired. He looked back, and he was frustrated. He was angry to see that. He was disappointed to see that when four footsteps were there, now only two footsteps are there. He became frustrated and told, "My God, when I was happy, when I had happiness in my life, you were there along with me. When pain came into my life, I see only two footsteps. Where are you?" Voice came back again and said, "My dear son, the footsteps that you see now is not yours; it's mine. From the day you had pains in your life, from the day you were in sadness, from day from the time you were in darkness, I am carrying you on my shoulders. The footsteps that you see is not yours; it's mine. My dear children, in whichever God you believe in, have trust in God, have faith in God." whatever is coming the darkness is coming around your life it's not for your destruction but it's only to make you stars to make you shine to come out gloriously and that is what marivanius life teaches us so these were a couple of fragmented thoughts that i shared with you uh, i hope that this uh, this reflections these sayings will keep on reflecting your life and inspiring your life once again what what are the three points that you are thinking on today first of all as bethanians you should be children of golden tongue as bethanians you should be virtuous one and from you virtue should flow into the world and thirdly as bethanians you should be children of deep faith especially during this pandemic your faith your depth in faith will instill hope into your life may marivanius intercede into all of our living may he continue to inspire each and every one of us wishing you a very fruitful day and the blessings of the day may god bless you thank you we live by faith and not by sight here is a bible reading by anna sarina of dandy vishudadum kalasam shishu patanam jayam onnu mudal parnu varela anderam kartadu vere 22 vere therinjathu taan poganna ella patanamilekku naathil poranilekku irandu verai avare thanjumbe aichu avan avarodu parnu koithu varai vela naadu chirikam adana koithinu vela kaari aichuvan koithinte naadu nodu ningal prarthikkin poodu veni daachanaalo reedeyilekku kunnaarigal enna pole naan ningale aichunu മനുഷ്യയിലെയോ സന്ധ്യയോ ചെലപ്പോ നിങ്ങൾ കൊണ്ടുപോകരുത് വഴിയിൽ വെച്ച് ആരെയും അഭിവാദനം ചെയ്യുകയും അരുത് നിങ്ങൾ ഏത് വീട്ടിൽ പ്രവേശിച്ചാലും ഈ വീടിന് സമാധാനം എന്ന് ആദ്യമേ ആശംസിക്കണം സമാധാനത്തിന്റെ പുത്തൻ അവിടെ ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നിങ്ങൾ സമാധാനം അവനിൽ കൊടുക്കൊള്ളും ഇല്ലെങ്കിൽ അത് നിങ്ങളിലേക്ക് തിരിച്ചു പോരും അവരോടൊപ്പം ഭക്ഷിക്കുകയും പാനം ചെയ്യുകയും ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ട് ആ വീട്ടിൽ തന്നെ വസിക്കണം വേലക്കാരൻ തന്റെ കൂലിക്ക് അർഹനാണല്ലോ നിങ്ങൾ വീട് തോറും ചുറ്റി നടക്കരുത് ഏതെങ്കിലും നഗരത്തിൽ നിങ്ങൾ പ്രവേശിക്കുകയും അവർ നിങ്ങളെ സ്വീകരിക്കുകയും ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് വേണ്ടുന്നത് ഭക്ഷിക്കലിൽ അവിടെയുള്ള രോഗികളെ സുഖപ്പെടുത്തലിൽ ദേവരാജ് നിങ്ങളെ സമീപിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നുവെന്ന് അവരോട് പറയുകയും ചെയ്യുവൻ നിങ്ങൾ ഏതെങ്കിലും നഗരത്തിൽ പ്രവേശിക്കുമ്പോൾ അവർ നിങ്ങളെ സ്വീകരിക്കാതിരുന്നാൽ തെരുവിലിറങ്ങി നിന്നുകൊണ്ട് പറയണം നിങ്ങളുടെ നഗരത്തിൽ നിന്ന് ഞങ്ങളുടെ കവികളിൽ പറ്റിയിട്ടുള്ള പൊടി പോലും നിങ്ങൾക്കെതിരെ ഞങ്ങൾ തട്ടിക്കളയുന്നു എന്നാൽ ദൈവരാജ്യം സമീപിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നുവെന്ന് നിങ്ങൾ ആദ്യം കൊള്ളുവിൻ
Here is a kaleidoscopic view of his life and works. Ivanius was the first Metropolitan and Archbishop of the Zero Malangara Catholic Church and the major archdiocese of Trivandrum. He was the founder of the Bethany Ashram Order of Monks and the Bethany Manam Order of Nuns. Now, let us hear a short speech on Matt Ivanius by Anna Alex of Grade 7B. Hey everyone, dear parents, teachers and all my dear friends, greetings to all. Myself, Anna Alex of Standard 7B. As we commemorate the 67th death anniversary of Archbishop Apun Givargis Bar Ivanius, I am here to give you a glimpse on the life of the Divine Personality, especially on how he emphasized the need for education. Archbishop Bar Ivanius was a visionary and his educational vision has relevance for today. He emancipated the socially marginalized and disenfranchised people of his time through his educated vision and practice. Archbishop Abungi Varghis Marivanius was the first Metropolitan Archbishop of Trivandrum and the founder of Malangara Syrian Catholic Church. He was the first MA degree holder in Malangara Church. He served as the principal of the Kotayam MD Seminary High School and as a professor at Serenpur College. Givargis Panika was born in Mavilikara on 21st September 1882 to Thomas Panika and Anama Panika. He studied at CMS College, Kotayam and obtained a bachelor's degree in economics and Indian history from Madras Christian College. In 1901, he took master's degree with distinction from the same college. The biblical and the ecclesial view of education, that is, education is for growth. It is for realizing one's full potential. One has to grow in the image and likeness of the God to be the light and life of the world. It was the foundation of Maribanius' educational vision. Ivanius, the founder of Malangara Catholic Church, was deeply aware of the importance of education and its transformative power. He himself was a beneficiary of advanced in education. He understood what it could do to his community, especially the poor, the marginalized and the women of his community and society at large. Ivanius understood the crucial role of women in transforming society. An excellent example of Ivanius' visionary leadership in educating women can be seen on his decision in founding religious congregations for women. He sent some girls to Barisol for higher education under the supervision of the Oxford Missionary Epiphany Sisters and they became the first members of the Bethany Mother that he founded. These educated and totally dedicated nuns worked for the liberation of women through education. Thus, Ivanius had a profound impact on the society as a pioneer of liberation and education of women, his society, his community. Ivanius paid much attention to the marginalized and unwanted members of the community, especially all the orphaned and disabled people. He built orphanages for the children. During his lifetime, he established many institutions. Before his death, he wrote about the educational institutions he founded in his community. He established 78 primary schools, 50 high schools, 2 training schools and 1 college. Along with all these, he also started the first ashram with all these. He also started the first ashram in Malangara, Mundanmala, Rami Perinar on 15th August. 
August 1919. He named it Bethany and it soon became a place of pilgrimage and spiritual experience. Beaver East envisioned the ashram also being a shelter for the poor and marginalized. The educational vision of Maravanius continues to be realized today. Anchored on Maravanius' vision, the Malangara Catholic Church built schools and colleges and other professional educational institutions to provide an excellent education. The educational contribution of the Malangara Catholic Church to the community and Indian nation at large is exemplary. Malangara Catholic educational institutions are deemed to be some of the best in South India. It manages a large number of nursery schools, lower and upper primary schools, secondary and high secondary educational institutions. It has 20 training teachers, schools, 8 technical institutions and 12 colleges. They are the fruition and continual realization of the educational vision of Maribanius. In short, Maribanius opened the door for innumerable people who were denied the basic tools of knowledge and access to a bright future. He was a great force in the society through his pioneering efforts in the field of education and dedication to the cause of the poor. On this occasion of his 67th death anniversary, let us all imitate his holy life and let us try to give importance to edu education and to good values in our life like him. Thank you. Music washes away from the soul the depths of everyday life. As William Shakespeare said, the earth has music for those who listen. Now we can listen to a devotional song by Ria Roy and Zara Fedder. <laughs> The best and the most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. Thank you is one such prayer. Now I would like to invite Jennifer Ronald to give the vote of thanks. Gratitude is a powerful catalyst for happiness and nothing more is honorable than a thankful heart. I take this opportunity to put all my gratitude in the form of words. A warm and graceful good morning to all. Our most honorable Chief Guest, Rev. Father Paful OIC, Administrator, Rev. Father Thomas George OIC, Principal, Mrs. Shana Ranjit, Vice Principal, Mrs. Shiny Kevin, Teachers, Parents, and my dear friends. It is my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. 
Lord Byron said, Words are like small drops of ink falling like a dew upon a thought produces that which makes a thousand perhaps millions think. On behalf of the management and all students, I would like to thank our chief guest, Reverend Father Bufal OIC, who graced us with his impressive address. A big thank you to you, Father, for your inspiring motivational talk. Indeed, your words have inspired the students. I would like to take this opportunity to express my hearty thanks to our administrator, Reverend Father Thomas George OIC, Principal Shana Ma'am, Vice Principal Shiny Ma'am, for their constant support, guidance, and encouragement. I extend my sincere thanks to the teachers and non teaching staff for their enormous cooperation. I thank all my dear friends for showing your interest in this program. I once again thank everyone for making this program successful. Thank you. My Ivanius was indeed one of the greatest churchmen born and lived in India. Anyone who tries to spot out the secret of the success of the life and the mission of Mark Ivanius would never fail to find out that it was his openness to the foundation of his spirituality and the strength of his convictions. Except for the deep and the solid spirituality, Mark Ivanius would never have been so successful in his life and virtuous in his mission. Such were the problems that he solved and the crisis he overcame. Such was the inspiration that he gave us and the leadership he took over. In this pandemic, let us follow the path led by Mahdi Banyas and hand over ourselves to the safe hands of God.